Welcome back, it's Dex Not Dexter, back with another video, and today I'm reviewing a reacting to Alex Freeman video uh, where he is talking about Bitcoin and it hitting $10 million with Anthony. So we'll see how this uh, this goes. You know, Bitcoin's been like making waves recently. Uh, it's already like at 50,000. Like in the beginning of this year, like a year ago, like six thousand. Um, so of course, there's rumors saying it's gonna hit hundred thousand and a million. These rumors have been around like since Bitcoin's been around. So it's interesting to see what they're all talking about and uh, see if there's any validity, validity to this. Without further ado. Let's get into the video. Make sure y'all go like and subscribe to Lex Freeman Podcast. Great I think podcast. you've tweeted that uh, you believe that Bitcoin has a chance of uh, reaching 1 million. I don't know what it is currently. I think it's five, 60. 60, 60, which is incredible. <laughs> I think I remember when it was at least in the double digits. I think I remember when it was in the signal digits of a dollar. So the fact that it's crossed 50 is crazy. Uh, but uh, you're even crazier, apparently, thinking that it can reach a million. So do you think it's possible for it to reach a million? Is there some kind of transformative effects that we have to see first? When might it reach a million? Like, what are the signs that we would look for? What's required for it to reach a million? So let's just look at it from a macro perspective. Uh, gold is a $10 trillion asset. And when you compare the technology of gold to the technology of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is superior in every single way, right? Mm -hmm. It's more portable, it's more divisible, uh, it's more verifiable, it's more scarce on everything. And so some people would argue it's a 10x improvement. Some people argue it's a 100x improvement. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it's better in every type of way uh, because gold has a use outside of just money. Like it's good, uh, like gold is in a lot of electronics. It's like used for a lot of electrical work. Um, even that like you know gold gold has just a lot of just different properties outside of it just being a store of value or a valuable precious metal it's actually a useful precious metal that's that you use in other ways and uh and also like i guess bitcoin is scarce just like how gold is but it's it's a little different um as far as scales of scarcity where it's like it's like bitcoin's artificially scarce because of like the mining system and how bitcoin and blockchain is it's kind of made up and everything, but uh, it's definitely interesting to see uh, how everything works out. Let's get back to the video. From a technology standpoint. And so we don't need Bitcoin to actually kind of um, capture the full 10X or 100X improvement from a, a market cap standpoint. If Bitcoin simply captures 2X the value be a $20 trillion market cap, which would put Bitcoin at about a million dollars, right? So kind of just from a macro perspective, if you have a 10X or 100X improvement from a technology standpoint and you directionally get some value capture in that direction, you're hitting around a million or more uh, dollar price point. Can I ask a quick question, mm -hmm. which is uh, what's the current market cap for Bitcoin? Uh, the current market cap is right around a trillion, just over a trillion dollars. And you're saying gold is 10 trillion. And uh, sorry, where did you get the twenty trillion? Twenty trillion would just be two x gold's market cap. Got it. Right. So if it's a ten x technology improvement, let's just say it only captures two x the market cap. Got it. Right. And so again, if it was to capture just gold's market cap, kind of the equivalent, puts you around five hundred thousand dollars. Right. So you can kind of or see single there's Bitcoin. So if you capture the entirety of the gold market, uh, then it would be value of a single bitcoin uh the price of a single bitcoin would be five hundred thousand dollars okay to reach a million it would be double that that's what the 20 trillion comes from correct got it so if you then say to yourself okay how does the Crazy. uh the pricing um kind of cycles work right or, yeah. or, or the boom and bust cycles gold is a very um kind of linear type supply schedule, meaning that uh, there is a certain amount of gold that comes out of the ground each year. The inter-year variation in that incoming supply is not much, right? Maybe there's an extra mining company that gets set up or a couple of them, or maybe one goes out of business. But for the most part, the kind of inflationary uh, increase to the supply of gold is pretty stagnant uh, year over year. Bitcoin has 
a very unique feature, which every four years, there is a programmatic supply shock, meaning that uh, in the beginning, 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes was introduced into the supply. After four years of that happening every 10 minutes, it was cut in half. So on a, 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 in a single moment, it went from 50 to now it was 25. Four years every 10 minutes, 25, got cut in half again to 12 and a half. And then recently in May 2020, got cut to 6.25. When you have an asset that is determined, the price based on supply and demand, you normally have two inputs to the equation. What is the supply and what is the demand? In an asset like gold or a stock or anything else, we have to do our best guess at the supply, both the existing supply and the incoming supply, and do our best guess at the demand. And we're actually pretty good at this a lot of times in terms of directionally saying it's going to go up or down, and here's kind of some price point milestones. Bitcoin's unique in that there's 100% verifiable proof of the existing supply, the total supply, and the incoming daily supply. So we know 100% I can show you on the actual blockchain uh, or in the code that there's 21 million Bitcoin. Uh, and that's all there will ever be. I can show you that there's 18.6 million, give or take, uh, Bitcoin that actually are in circulation today. right? And I can go all the way back and show you every single transaction that's ever occurred since January 3rd, 2009. And then I can show you on a daily basis that 900 Bitcoin a day are coming into the circulating supply. And so when you have 100% confidence because you can prove the supply side of this equation, you can hold it constant. I know with 100% accuracy, the supply side. So now I've reduced the mathematical equation that I need to do to determine price movements to a 50% reduction. I only have to worry about demand. I don't have to worry about supply. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at demand, I can do all kinds of things. I can take the demand over the last 10 years and the growth and just extrapolate it out. I can increase it. I can decrease it, whatever. But what you find is that the supply shocks lead to significant price appreciation as the asset gets repriced because there, there's a supply shock to it. And so probably the best thing that I've done over the last couple of years was in 2019, I started to talk about the idea that we were going to have both a supply shock and the demand shock in 2021. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, in 2020. I didn't know when this bull market that we were in was going to end. Nobody knows, right? It's impossible to time these things. But you could tell that we were kind of at late stages of a cycle. There was inverted yield curves. There was re, uh, gyrations in the repo markets. A lot of CEOs leaving their jobs, you know, all this kind of stuff. And all I said was at some point when the market turns over, the government's going to have to step in. We were addicted to stimulus. They're going to have to manipulate interest rates down. And they're going to have to print money. I had no clue that there was going to be a global pandemic, that they were going to have to step in in such an aggressive way and move rates not down, but down to zero. And that they not only were going to print hundreds of billions, but they could print trillions of dollars. But the framework that I used to think about this was when they do that, everyone is going to run to store value assets. They're going to run to gold. They're going to run to Bitcoin, et cetera. And right as they do that, it appears at the same time, there's going to be this supply shock. So you're going to get a supply shock and a demand shock that are both positive for the, the price. And I called it rocket fuel for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Well, it happened. And here we are. I now look for and I say, okay, we are likely going to see 100,000 Bitcoin, $100,000 Bitcoin this year, right? At some point, I don't know when it happens, but we're moving in that so direction. So you think in 2021, we'll see 100,000? That would be uh, my most conservative view. Uh, I, I've said $100,000 since 2019, and people thought that was insane and crazy and all this stuff. Now I'm the conservative guy in the room because I stick with $100,000 and people are saying, you know, multiples of that number yeah. uh so we'll see what happens but wow. but i think that there's still a lot of room kind of to run from a, a u.s dollar price standpoint what is on the horizon is in 2024 we will have another supply shock and so that's what i think will carry us to the million dollar bitcoin from price. the six two five to whatever 50 percent reduction yeah yeah and so that's what i think uh will basically when we get that that next supply shock that'll carry us up over a hundred or over a one million dollar uh bitcoin price which if historical examples persist. And again, sometimes it's hard to use historical examples to uh, look at future events. Um, but if that happens, we would see a million dollars of Bitcoin by the end of 2026. After that wave. So 2024 um, basically is the supply shock. And within you know 18 to 24 months, you would see the, uh, the, the kind of top of the next market. Hopefully without a coupling to, the net, uh, to another pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we would like to do all of this without a public health crisis. So that would take it to uh, 20 trillion 
you don't have to compare it to the dollar, essentially, in some sense, that the dollar could also lose value. I mean, there's a lot of kind of dynamics at play here. No, but like fundamentally, there's going to be a huge move uh, in your prediction of uh, value into into Bitcoin. I mean, that was an interesting uh, talk. Uh, I agree for the most part, but some parts I don't really agree with, or maybe uh, a little bit more. I wish I could ask a question about it. Um, where uh, yeah, Bitcoin is scarce, but it's like I said, it's kind of artificially scarce because like it's built in by design. So it's a digital currency. Um, so it's not like it's, you know, it's scarce, it's scarce by design, you know? So if I had even like pieces of paper or something like that, and like, you know, I tore it in half and I stopped, when I stop printing out this paper, it'll be scarce and be more valuable. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Um, and I also think like the price is super high right now because of the pandemic, because the uncertainty with America and how much the, the government's printing out in a normal economic situation, I do wonder how m much Bitcoin would rise given like the dollar is strong, We're not, like America wouldn't have been printing as much. Um, how much would that really affect Bitcoin? Like how you say like in four years, it's gonna be another uh, cycle of like, you know, halving of the Bitcoins being pushed out to the market which just creates like some type of more artificial scarcity how does that really affect it if like in four years we're stronger as a as a nation or the u.s dollar is stronger uh i mean it's good possibility that it, you know it won't be stronger uh we probably still be reeling back from the pandemic and everything so uh, what i'm saying is not likely to happen um also uh you know blockchain the underlying underlying technology around this is not that sh you know is a new technology is very like popular right now and is very secure but as technologies you know grow and change i do always wonder how it will last in the long haul if that makes sense where we see where we see a lot of the technologies of securities you know say in the past maybe very strong like maybe two-factor authentic authentication was very strong and you know, could it be broken and all those other security measures. But it, it, uh, as technology grows, it's like so does uh, like the chance and the risk of like hacks. Like we've seen stuff with like zero exchange servers with uh, Microsoft uh, PHP, which is hacked recently. You know, so it's always interesting to me to see how like all this plays out and like how we will do with blockchain because it is a technology and only blockchain by itself, but also like the companies popping up around blockchain like PayPal, Cash App, you know, some of the exchanges that are holding the Bitcoin in mass where they may be a bigger and better target to attack, like for like a Bitcoin exchange and the risk of it, you know what I'm saying, the ease of use because like the adoption of Bitcoin is like made easier by these exchanges so more people could buy buy this and, and adopt it for, you know, the for a certain point in time. And that's why I feel like, you know, gold and silver is not really like that. Because even with like Bitcoin, like you are part of the ledger, you have like a footprint. You kind of, in some way, shape, or form, you know, you are pretty much anonymous. Like, uh, some way, shape, or form, you are like uh, tracked on there. Like, it's always like a history of you with your wallet or whatever on there. With gold, it's like you don't necessarily have to have a footprint, right? You could just kind of buy it or buy it all cash, you know. And it's just like you were there. You got the, you got your asset. You're gone. It's kind of like. If, even though it has similar values as like gold or silver um gold and silver like kind of last like a while and it kind of stood the test of time even throughout technology changes where like you know gold's been around since like medieval times since we had like pitchforks and sticks with fire on there and cavemen you know so and it's like i don't think it's going away anytime soon uh it's very like you know ease of use so it's, it's definitely interesting to, to see that um I wouldn't say not invest in Bitcoin, especially because it's going up right now. And one of the major things I feel like with the pandemic that's also raising the price of Bitcoin are the businesses that are getting inside of it, like Tesla, like PayPal, that, that are running to this asset and like pumping it up. It's not just like the everyday person like you and me uh, that's pushing up the price anymore. It's like the actual huge businesses like Tesla about like 1.5 billion uh, Bitcoin. And so, yeah, these are the things to keep in mind. It's like, do you think that'll still be the trend in four years? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, regardless of that, it's like I don't think you can go wrong with buying like a gold 
Bitcoin or silver coin. Even with Bitcoin, I don't think you can buy. You can go wrong within the short term. It's more like the long term asset. Like, do I think that this is going to be a lo- around the whole time? Like, will it stand up to new technology changes? I see which I like to maybe, you know, new technologies come out that can make it easier to hack. Even like exchange servers, which I'm pretty sure will hold most of the Bitcoin. I don't think most people who buy Bitcoin have it personally. I think they're, they're most people are holding on their holding holding on their exchanges and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll see, you know, how this thing works out. I think it's very interesting. Uh, but like, you know, it's all kind of, it's all speculative right now. Um, like they're kind of using Bitcoin as a, you know, like using it based off of gold and like, we'll see how that works. Um, yeah. Cause like, it's even like some stuff that's like a loss forever. Uh, like there's like Bitcoin that people can access from way back when, uh, when the prices were like just dirt cheap and like, that, that could never be a part of circulation anymore because it's like just gonna be stuck you know it's just stuff like that it's like kind of makes me a little nervous uh, i wouldn't be i wouldn't be scared especially if you're like a younger person like in your 20s like i am i think you should definitely like maybe try to invest in the bitcoin while you can and like and be able to take risk while your financial tolerance would allow <laughs> Um, I plan on buying Bitcoin or some type of cryptocurrency asset. I think Ethereum is about to do pretty well. Um, I didn't even know it was over a thousand, uh, but it's like eighteen hundred today. Last time I checked, and so I was like, oh, I mean, I'm I'm really cool with Ethereum. Um, so maybe I get some Doge or some Ripple or something like that. But we'll definitely see how this goes. Tell me what your thoughts are down below. If you like are really bullish on crypto and Bitcoin, if you want me to do more like crypto and Bitcoin videos in general, uh, maybe you see my journey becoming like a skeptic to a full blown shill. <laughs> holding for life and stuff like that but we'll see um like i did like this video i may check out more videos and react to more bitcoin videos if y'all like that with that being said don't forget to like and subscribe dex not dexter out